Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to formulate a very gentle but effective salicylic acid face scrub. Now what's great about this face scrub is I'm also incorporating some AHAs but I'm making it in a very mild formulation base and of course salicylic acid being a beta hydroxy acid is more mild on the skin for regular use anyway. So now let me show you how it's made. This is the product you're going to be formulating here. Now I've made it a, a creamy formula. One, because this means I can incorporate some really good mildness additives. The other reason is that it's a real non-drip formula. It's going to remain stable over a very long shelf life. You'd easily get three years shelf life out of this formula. First of all, we need to prepare our water phase. Now to this, I'm adding some chelating agent. And I'm also going to add some preservative at this stage. Now it's not going to go in totally yet, but this is an important step because I'm then going to add the polymer. Now the polymer we need to use needs to be very electrolyte resistant, not just electrolyte tolerant, but electrolyte resistant. So I'm using Sepimax Zen. Now this material does take a little time to hydrate, so I'm going to stir it through. One of the reasons I added the preservative at this early stage is then once it's stirred through, you can cover this and leave it overnight to swell fully, even in a full vat ready for manufacture. As long as that preservative is present, the product won't grow any microorganisms and then that polymer can swell really effectively. Here is a sample I prepared yesterday. This exact phase up to this step but I just prepared it yesterday and as you can see that polymer has almost completely swollen. Now on the day you're going to finish the formulation or the manufacture of this product you can just give it a simple stir and you'll see it makes a really beautiful smooth gel. So it is important that you give the Sepimax Zen plenty of time to hydrate. It will look like this when you first add it. You can either stir this under low shear for a while especially in a big vat or stir it under low shear cover it, leave it overnight, and when you come back the next day, it will very easily turn into this beautiful gel. Now it is important that you have this step completed before you proceed to the next step, which is going to be forming our emulsion. So now I'm going to heat this gelled water phase, and once that starts to heat up, I'm going to add my emulsifying waxes. Now these emulsifying waxes, they're non-ionic, they're also high HLB, so they'll ensure a good, easy wash off of the product after it's been applied. The amount of waxes here help make sure we get this nice creamy consistency, even in the presence of a lot of acid and a low pH. And of course, being non-ionic means they're very mild to the skin. Because we don't have any liquid oils in this formula, we need to add this directly to the water phase when it's hot so that we can melt and emulsify these waxes in one step. Now while I wait for my gelled water phase to heat up, I'm going to prepare my salicylic acid. Now I can't just add my salicylic acid into the water, it won't dissolve and it won't be stable. So I'm going to first of all heat my propane diol. Now I can heat this gently and I'm going to add my salicylic acid into this. And then I can stir this gently and you will see the salicylic acid will completely dissolve into the propane diol. This also works with propylene glycol. In my formula I'm using a propane diol. So there is my salicylic acid dissolved and ready to be added to the emulsion once that's formed. When my water phase is nice and hot, I can add the waxes and then I stir these until they're fully melted and a nice creamy emulsion has formed. Now we have our emulsion, we can add the salicylic acid.
Then we can add the cocoa glucoside. Now this is just gonna give us a, a nice mild foam. It's also a very mild surfactant. So it will just help with spreading and getting a really nice gentle extra cleanse to the face from the product. Now you wanna stir gently from this point onwards if it's in a vat, side sweepers is good because of course the cocoa glucoside will foam. So we don't wanna to introduce too much air, but we wanna make sure it's mixed through homogeneously. Now it will start to thicken up as it cools. Again, those side sweepers are very important in a larger batch to make sure you're getting homogeneous mixing. Now I'm going to add some Novachem Nova Scrub Rice. The reason I'm using this as my abrasive agent is it's microparticles of rice, but they're impregnated with AHAs from kiwi, grapefruit, and lemon. So it's a really nice natural source of alpha hydroxy acids. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of fragrance just to make it smell nice and fresh. And again, you need those side sweepers in a vat because the product will thicken up. Now you could use less emulsifying wax if you don't want as creamy a finished product. Uh, I personally like the creaminess of this product. I use this product myself um, because it doesn't drip off the face. It spreads really easily and it gives a really mild but effective exfoliating cleanse. Now we just need to check and adjust the final pH. Now you will find the final pH will be around 3 to 3.1. That's perfect. It's going to mean that our AHA and BHAs are very bioavailable. Don't adjust pH much above this. You do need to keep it quite acidic so that you get bioavailability from the AHA and BHA those acids to be effective for the skin. That's another reason why I've got so much emulsifying wax in here so that you maintain this creamy consistency over a three year shelf life. It's a very, very stable product. Alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids have some very strict regulatory limits around the world. I've created this formula. It will comply with most of your regions. Of course, just do a final check uh, for your specific region with this formula. Contact us for the formula. We're happy to provide it for you. Salicylic acid can be a little tricky to work with. As you can see, I made it really simple in this formula. We do have our video on formulating with acids. You are welcome to watch, which also goes through some of the regulatory restrictions with AHAs and BHAs as well. I've incorporated several mildness inclusions into this formula to help make sure it's mild but effective for all skin types. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below. Make sure you contact us for the full formula method and supplier details. Happy formulating.